In today's lesson, we're going to be going over how to create a very simple math game in Swift UI. And this was actually one of the first projects I ever created myself when I was learning how to program. So I thought it would be a perfect addition for this channel. So what we're going to be creating is a game where we can answer math problems. And if we click on a number, it will take us to the next math problem. So every time we click on the correct answer, it's going to increase the score by one. So we can continue doing some math problems and we can improve our math as time goes on. We can try to get all the correct answers and you'll see the score going up. Otherwise, if we click something wrong, such as 915, something that doesn't make sense like 391, you'll see the score go down. And this is a very simplified version, so you can go for as long as you want. It's just a perfect way to practice SwiftUI with the columns and the horizontal stacks and also how to update the score plus updating the logic. So if you want to create this app, let's go ahead and go to Xcode and hold down Shift Command plus N. Then we can go ahead and click on app and click on next. And here you should give your project a name. So I'm going to call it math game two. And we're going to be using Swift UI and Swift as the language. Then we will click on next, specify a project location and click on create. Now the first thing we're going to do is close the sidebar, change the iPod touch to an iPhone 13. And we're going to try to render a preview to make sure that our app is working correctly. If the preview renders, you can go ahead and hold Option Command plus Enter to hide the bar so we can actually concentrate on the code. And to get started, I want to go ahead and create six different state variables. So the first state, which is going to be a private variable of correct answer, is going to be set initially to zero so we can keep track of the correct answer. Then we can go ahead and type in add state private var and we need to specify a choice array. So I'm going to be calling it choice array and it's going to be an array of integers, which is going to hold the numbers that we want the user to select. So as a placeholder, we're just going to put zero, one, two, and three. But we will also create a function that will generate random numbers and shuffle this list so that we will have some options. Then we need to create a state variable, which is private var first number. And this is the first number that we're going to add in our problem. And we need to do the same thing for the second number. So var second number is going to equal zero. Now I also want to add a limit to what numbers we can add. So state private var difficulty. And depending on the number you insert here, it's going to set a limit cap to which two numbers are going to be added together. So if you add 1000, that means it's going to give you problems with answers up to 1000. So it can be 500 plus 500 or 400 plus 600. And it's going to give you those kind of problems. If you put 100, it's going to give you problems such as 45 plus 36 or 22 plus 30. It's going to stay within that range so that you can make it a bit easier. So for this video, we can even leave it at 100 to keep things much more simple. 1000 can be quite difficult if you're not good at math. Next, let's go ahead and create one more state variable. So private var score, which is going to equal zero. And each time the user guesses correctly, the score will go up. Otherwise, the score is going to go down. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create the buttons so we can get that out of the way. So to do that, we're going to click on our folder and click on command plus N and create a new Swift UI view. So click on next and we're going to call this answer button and click on create. Then inside the answer button, we can go ahead and create a variable called number of type int because we want the user to specify this if they use this struct. And inside the body, we have a text which is going to use this number. So here we're going to add some quotation marks, a backslash, parentheses, and we're going to add the number inside. And it's going to give us an error at the bottom because we need to specify a number every time we use this struct. So here we can just go ahead and type in 100. And let's actually open up the sidebar to see exactly what we're creating. So if we click on resume, we should have a text that says 100, but we want to give it a nice aspect. So we're going to go ahead and add a frame with the width and height of 110. So 110 followed by height of 110. Then we want to give it a font of dot system. And inside here, we're going to give it a size of 40 and a weight of dot bold. 
So now we have a thick number. Then we want to give it a foreground color of color.white. And to make sure that we can see it, we also have to give it a background color of color.blue. Then we want to give it a clip shape, or if you want it to remain a rectangle, you can also do that. But we will type in clip shape and say circle. And finally, we will give it some padding. Well, that's going to cover the button that we need for our content view. Now we can actually go ahead and close this file and also close the sidebar so we have more space to play around with our app. But before we continue with creating the UI, I want to go ahead and create the functionality. So down here, we're going to go ahead and create a function which is called generate answers. And of course, as you might have guessed it, we want to create some answers that the user can use to answer the math problem. So the first thing we need to do is assign a number to first number, which is going to be an integer of random and it's going to be in range zero to the difficulty level divided by two because we need both numbers to add up to 100 at most. And it's going to be the same thing for the second number. So you can go ahead and copy that and type in second number. Then we're going to have a temporary variable which is going to be called answer list like that. And that's going to equal an array of integer and it's going to be empty initially. And we're going to also assign the correct answer to be the first number plus the second number. Now we also have to add the numbers to the answer list because we're going to have a new array which is going to have the correct answer in it plus three random numbers. So to do this, we need to go ahead and type in for i in zero to two. We can go ahead and call the answer list and dot append and type in integer dot random in range zero to difficulty. So that's going to loop three times and it's going to give us three random answers that the user might accidentally click on. Then below that, now that we have three answers in the array, we just need to add the correct answer. So we can go ahead and type in answer list dot append. And inside here, we will just type correct answer. And the choice array is going to now be set to the answer list dot shuffled because we don't want the correct answer to always be the last element. We want the list to be random so that when the user clicks on it, the correct answer will be either in position one, two, three, or four. We want it to always be in a random position. So dot shuffled is just going to put them around in random positions. So this whole function is going to take care of generating the numbers, putting them in an array, and also providing the correct answer. Now we also need a function that can tell whether we clicked on the correct answer or not. And it's actually a very simple function to create and we'll just go above and type in function answer is correct. And inside here we have to provide a variable called answer of type integer to check. And inside the function we will type in let is correct equal the answer if it's equal to the correct answer. And if it is, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. So if this evaluates to true, we get true. Otherwise, we get false. And if it is correct, we can go ahead and call self.score plus equals one. So it's a positive reinforcement else it means they answered the wrong question. So they're going to go ahead and receive a negative score. So minus equals one. So with that being done, we now have the functionality for that and we have the button set. And I'm going to leave the rest for the next video. So as always guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.